All right, welcome back to the Come Follow Me Bible Challenge. My name is Jeremy Howard. Thank you for joining me today. In our following along of this schedule, we come to John 14 through 17 for the week of June 5th through the 11th. <clears throat> well, this is going to be pretty much all about the Holy Spirit. It is my privilege to talk to you about the Holy Spirit today, kind of like an introduction to who He is. And uh, I hope you're down for that. Glad that you've joined me. I recently taught through this in my Sunday school class that I teach at our church. So if I can remember, I will throw a link in here to that Sunday school class where we go through Christian theology. We've been doing this for some time now. Let me see if I can pull up real quick uh, how many lessons deep we are in this. And it's not the first time I've taught through Christian theology. This is maybe the third playlist that we have on this website. Uh, so there, there's one that's more detailed and thorough. There's another one that's more books on the bottom shelf, entry level type Christian theology. This one's somewhere in between those two, I think. So far, we've done 31 sessions, 31 classes, totaling over 17 hours of content. So, no, sorry, over 27 hours of content. So uh, if you're wanting to learn about Christian theology, talking about God's communicable and incommunicable attributes, the Trinity, the image of God in man, uh, the effect of sin on man, the deity of Christ, etc., etc., check that out. And just recently talked about the Holy Spirit, and uh, you can listen to those classes. So far, at the time I'm recording this, I've recorded or we've done four classes on the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is God, part one. The Spirit is God, part two. The Holy Spirit is an author, and the Holy Spirit illumines us. If that sounds interesting to you, hopefully you can click a link that's in the description. It's all dependent on me remembering to put that in there, and you can check it out, all right? So today, uh, we are going to the upper room where Jesus is with his disciples, telling them about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we're just going to jump right in to John 14, verses 16 and 17. Jesus tells his disciples, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, because he abides with you and will be in you. Amazing promises given by Jesus, and this is actually quite revolutionary. For the Jewish people, they were used to hearing about the Holy Spirit in more of an impersonal sense. Now, I don't mean by that that the Holy Spirit was not a person, then he became a person. The Holy Spirit eternally has been a person, distinct from the Father and the Son. He is a he he should never be called an it. And he himself is God. He is seen hovering over the waters at creation. He's actually the first person of the Godhead mentioned. In Genesis 1, verse 2, there he is hovering over the waters. He uh, is creator. He is all-powerful, and he's eternal, it says in Scripture. So he is an eternal person, one of the persons of the Godhead. However, in the Old Testament, before the initiation of the New Covenant, the Holy Spirit was seen coming upon people and then leaving. He would show up, and then he would leave. That was what he was doing. Well, Jesus here tells his disciples something pretty amazing, that this helper is going to be with them forever. And he's referencing as the helper, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit. That word for helper it can be translated a number of ways, the Greek word. Yours might say comforter or counselor or teacher. All of those are appropriate. And he's going to be with them forever. The world cannot receive him, but the disciples, those who believe in Jesus, those who follow Jesus, receive him and know him because he abides with them and will be in them. So it's revolutionary in the sense that he's going to be with them forever, but not only that, he's going to be in them they will receive the Holy Spirit, and He will be with them and in them forever. Amazing. 
Well, let's continue because Jesus talks a lot about the Holy Spirit in this upper room discourse that he has with his disciples, preparing them for his departure from earth. 14, John 14, starting in verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. You heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Now I have told you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I will not speak much more with you, for the ruler of the, the world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. Get up, let us go from here. All right. Amazing passage. But for our purposes today, talking about the Holy Spirit, here's uh, the key verse, verse 26. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, will be sent by the Father. The Father will send, and He'll be sent in the name of Jesus. And He's going to teach the disciples all things. So He has a teaching function among the disciples after He is sent by the Father in the name of the Son. And specifically, with these disciples, he's going to bring to their remembrance all that Jesus said to them. Perhaps you've wondered before, especially since we're reading John's gospel here, how could it be that John remembered what to write about Jesus because John probably wrote this around 90 AD or after? We're talking some 60 years after the ascension of Christ. Well, the Holy Spirit brought to his remembrance all that Jesus had said to him. So John was able to do this, no problem. John knew what it is he was to say because he was inspired by the Holy Spirit and he was illumined in his remembrance by the Holy Spirit, which is pretty amazing. And Jesus says that in this, the the sending of the Holy Spirit by the Father in the name of the Son is going to impart peace to his disciples. Notice that he said, that peace he leaves with them or gives to them, not as the world gives, okay? It's, it's different than worldly peace, praise God for that. But it's peace being given, being left with the disciples, therefore their hearts should not be troubled or fearful. And this peace is administered to them by the sending of the Holy Spirit, because he is with them always and forever, a great, great comfort for the disciples. Moving right along, we'll go now to John 15. We'll look at the last two verses of that chapter. Jesus continues to teach them about the Holy Spirit, one long conversation, or monologue really, that Jesus is having with the disciples. He says, verse 26, when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. And you will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. Now here's something interesting. In the passage we just looked at, the end of chapter 14, Jesus said that the Father is going to send the Spirit in the name of the Son. Here at the end of chapter 15, the Son says that He's going to send the Spirit from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. He was not created by the Father, because remember, the Bible says the Spirit is eternal, but He proceeds from the Father. Interesting. That's some deep theology for you that you can mull over for a bit. And what's His job going to be? to testify about Jesus. Now, again, this had a special application to these disciples who became the apostles who wrote Scripture. They were the ones that needed the special remembrance of all that Jesus had taught them. And he's going to testify about Jesus to these disciples. But I'd say that we could make application to our day in that when the Holy Spirit comes— He's going to testify about Jesus when he comes upon believers in Jesus today. 
some people have made his ministry out to be something like um, he creates chaos. He comes upon people and they start babbling. He comes upon people and they start acting like animals. He comes upon people and they lose all control. No, actually, when he comes upon people, his number one job is to testify about Jesus. And we can tell if an action attributed to the Spirit is biblical or true by considering, well, what was the result of this action as it pertains to the person and work of Jesus Christ? Because if a person does something and says, yeah, the Spirit led me to do this or that, and it does not glorify God, it does not glorify particularly the work of Jesus Christ, it doesn't uphold the truth about Jesus Christ, then actually, no, that's not from the Spirit. We can say that confidently because he's going to be testifying about Jesus. That's what he's up to. That's what his ministry is about. All right. Well, let's uh, let's keep going because there are a couple more passages to look at. Jesus talks a lot about the Holy Spirit in these passages, 14 through 16. We'll now go to chapter 16, starting in verse 5. Jesus says, But now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he, or and he, when he comes will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me, and concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me, and concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. Well, Jesus has already said that the world cannot receive him. The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. However, that does not mean that the Holy Spirit has no what's the word, function or ministry toward the world. He very clearly does. He is convicting the world of three particular things, sin, righteousness, and judgment. And this is important because that ministry toward the unbeliever is necessary when that unbeliever becomes a believer. There is no sinner, no one in his flesh, who can be converted to Christ and born again without being convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment by the Holy Spirit. This work of God is absolutely necessary in his life before he can be converted to Jesus Christ. However, um, the of course, the majority of the world does not receive the Holy Spirit. He is rejected. The work that he has, the ministry he has, particularly through the people of Christ, the preachers, the evangelists, the church as a whole, that's rejected by the world. The world doesn't want anything to do with that. The world likes being in their sin. So that's the problem, is that the world does not receive him, the world cannot receive him, the world does not want to receive him. However, for those whom God has chosen, for those who will be saved, this ministry is received, and they are convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and led to faith in Christ. So, very interesting. The Holy Spirit does have a ministry in the world. He is just not received by the world. Well, let's uh, keep reading, starting in verse 12 of John 16, where Jesus says, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Hmm. Quite interesting there. If we were to answer the question, what is the Holy Spirit constantly doing in his ministry? How would you answer that? Well, from this passage, you, you can give an answer. He is guiding people into truth. Now, again, there's a particular specific effect that this would have on these disciples as future scripture writers who would be inspired by the Spirit. However, this ministry continues that he is guiding God's people 
into all truth, not speaking on his own initiative, but speaking what he hears. And there's a uh, kind of a chain here of events where you have the father disclosing to the son, and he's, he's speaking what has been disclosed to him by the father. And the Spirit then receiving from the Son what has been disclosed to him from the Son. And then he takes what he has received from the Son and discloses it to the disciples. This is not to say that, uh, you know, the Father created the Son, and so the Father knows more than the Son, and the Son only knows what the Father teaches him. And then the Spirit was created, and so the Son then teaches the Spirit, and the Spirit only knows what the uh, Son chooses to share with Him. Okay, that's, that's not the way of viewing this passage. In fact, we have in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul says that the Holy Spirit searches the mind of God. So, if He searches the very mind of God, that means He knows all things, because you can't get any bigger than the mind of God, right? So, what you have actually is a display of order here. This is why, uh, this is probably the strongest passage, why we, we say that the Father is the first person of the Trinity, the Son is the second person of the Trinity, and the Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. That's not a created order. That's not a rank as far as like general, colonel, all that stuff. No, 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 it's not that. But there's order. The Father's not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, the Spirit's not the Father. They play uh, different, play out different roles in how they steward as eternal creator, all of creation. Salvation is a great example. The Father didn't die on the cross. The Son doesn't indwell believers and doesn't remain with believers forever as the Helper. That's the Holy Spirit. Okay, The Holy Spirit didn't elect people for salvation. That's the role of the Father. So they have different roles, different functions that are played out as different persons of the one eternal God. So you have the Father disclosing to the Son, the Son disclosing to the Spirit, and the Spirit disclosing to the disciples. And within the disciples, there's like two categories you can imagine. One, the apostles who wrote Scripture, and they were inspired. And then you have everyone else, the vast, vast, vast majority, everyone else outside of the apostles who wrote Scripture, outside of those who were inspired by the Spirit to write the New Testament. And we are just readers of the New Testament, and yet he still discloses to us, he still guides us into all truth through the doctrine, uh, or not the doctrine of, but the title of this function, illumination. We, we call it illumination, and it is like a doctrine in Christianity, where we believe that the Holy Spirit actually works in our minds as we read the Word of God to teach us. We have this anointing from God, the Holy Spirit, where we can not only understand but we can make spiritual connections in the Bible and make application to our personal lives through His power. So the Father discloses to the Son, the Son discloses to the Spirit, the Spirit discloses to all disciples. With Scripture writers, He inspires. With Scripture readers, He illumines. That's the chain of events and the order that's set before us here, which I think is pretty cool, because our God is a God of order and a God of of peace. Well, that was a flyover, John 14 through 16. So much to see there about the Holy Spirit. Again, you can listen more in depth by checking out the systematic theology, Christian theology classes that I teach through. If I remember, link in description. Thanks so much for joining me today. God bless.